In this video, I'm going to share with you my process for creating a website for a client using the data gathered from the web design questionnaire. If you're not sure which web design questionnaire I'm referring to, be sure to check out my last video. The web design questionnaire is a simple form I share with any new web design client that helps me and the client get on the same page. My process always begins with the first question on the questionnaire, and that's what is the goal of your website? Typically, clients are creating a website to sell a product or service and in some cases convey information. If the client's goal is to sell something, there are certain guidelines and best practices that will give them the best chance to succeed and you'll need to be able to share this intelligently with your client. If a site is only for conveying information, there are other guidelines and best practices that should be followed. For example, if you have a website that's strictly educational, things like readable fonts, colors, and an easy navigation will have a higher priority than things like a call to action. On the other hand, if you're selling products having a clear headline, summarized features and benefits, and a clear call to action are top priorities. In this video, I'm going to assume the client is selling a product. When selling a product or service, I like to utilize the following structure. A clear and concise headline, bullet-pointed features, and benefits. A clear call to action. The second question on the questionnaire is whether the client has a brand kit or logo. I use this question to determine the general marketing message as well as the color scheme of their website. In the event a client doesn't have a color scheme, it's a good idea to select something grayscale or black and white. It provides a neutral canvas that draws attention to their content. If they do have a logo and color scheme, it's important you implement them into your design. When it comes to logos, they too can provide some direction for the look and feel. Some logos can be cartoony, while others are modern, and still others have a more classical appeal. Try and detect the feel on the client's brand and implement it into the site. In the web design questionnaire, the client was given the opportunity to describe the expectation of their site. This can be a little tricky, but hopefully their description can get you pointed in the right direction. If their description is unclear, skip to the next question where they provide links to inspiration sites. That is, sites they want theirs to look and feel somewhat like. Next, the client should check off some boxes indicating pages they expect to see on their site. You may want to coach the client a little bit based on their goals concerning which pages to include. For example, if they're showing off handcrafted items or past work, it may be entirely appropriate to have a photo gallery. On the other hand, if their products are all the same and they're really interested in selling them through a store, it may be best not to include pages that could be distracting from the buying process. The last question on the web design questionnaire gives the client an opportunity to express anything else that's important to them. Maybe they really like animations, for instance. Try and implement something from this section to show you listened to their needs and made their site special. To be a successful designer with lots of happy clients, it's critically important to meet the client's expectations. For that reason, creating clear expectations from the beginning and putting those expectations into writing is important. To minimize back and forth and to incentivize the client to be descriptive and accurate when describing their desires, I limit the number of revisions included with my initial cost estimate. When you present a first version of a website to a client, this should be considered a draft. Revisions are any changes made to a draft. I allow my clients up to three revisions on the initial estimate. This gives them three opportunities to provide me direction. I charge a flat rate for additional revisions. It's a good idea to have a price list for the various services you provide as well. For example, I charge $100 per web page I design. I require a minimum of five web pages to build a site. I charge $40 per month to host the website. And I charge $125 per hour as an open rate. 
That way, if something's not on the price list, I can calculate how long it will take and multiply that by my hourly rate. I bill in hour increments for simplicity, but of course you can choose to bill in whatever minimum increment you like. I put all of this in writing up front so the client expectations are realistic. Finally, when you deliver the draft and revisions to the client, be sure to watermark them with the watermark feature. Not only will this make you look more professional and help them value your work, it will prevent them skipping out on paying the bill. If you're not sure how to do that, check out my previous video on watermarking websites. That's it for this video. In the next video, I'll share some tips on how and where to find new clients and grow your business. As always, be sure to subscribe to the channel and visit webstarts.com to create a free website and launch your own web design agency. See you next time.